Hello and welcome to GFM at Home. This morning is a really special service in that it's Pastor Ian's commissioning service. We're really pleased that God has brought Ian and Jill to us. And as part of our service, a couple of the members of our leadership team will be praying for them as we, I guess, officially welcome them and as they're commissioned for the work here. Michael Breton is going to be leading the commissioning part of this service. And also he's going to be bringing God's word to us. And so we really appreciate Michael taking the time to do that. And then following this service, if you're watching this in the morning, there is a brew by Zoom. And so again, just an opportunity within that to pray for, for Ian and Jill. And there might also be just a little surprise in, in there for them. First though, Dan and Phil are going to help us to lift our eyes to God as we worship together. Hey, it's great to be back with you. Seems crazy that it's been almost a year since this all kicked off. And so a year since I've done live worship with you. Um, but I'd just like to remind you that for every cloud, we need to find a good lining. Mine is that I've spent more time at home probably in the last 12 months than I have in the last eight years or so. Um, and that's been challenging, but it's been good as well. As you can see, my hair's grown. So those of you that like the Afro look, we're having a bit of that going on at the moment, although I can't promise for how much longer. And whatever we're up to and whatever state we're in, in some aspect, we're still okay and still able to worship God. Even if we can't sing, we can worship God. If we don't play an instrument, we can worship God. Our lives can be worship to God. So I want to take some time now and just do that, but do that in the way that I do it, which is with music. So we're going to just sing a few songs together. And yeah, join in as best you can. This is why I so often hear God say to me at the moment, just to be still. Be still. Let the waves crash. 
Well, it's certainly great to be with you uh, at Garstang Free Methodist Church. Be with you, of course. The uh, the difficult words these days, as I recognise, were scattered, no doubt, into our homes. But uh, even so, we believe and are, are filled with joy. We know the Holy Spirit is present with us all as we meet together today. Uh, today, of course, is not the start of the journey for Garstang Free Methodist Church. In, in fact, I know that you're celebrating a 50-year journey this far, and uh, we're so thankful for all that God has been doing in you and through you over the years, both in the, in the Garstang community and across the Northwest region, and of course, to different parts of the world. And I just want to simply say it on that note, uh, just even from a personal point of view, my heart's been so encouraged uh, over the years as I've seen the way God has been at work in you and through you. And, and I want to say thank you for your example to the wider Free Methodist Church of your heart for global missions. It's certainly been a joy and an encouragement. But today, as we think about that 50 year journey and all that God has been doing, of course, today is not a starting point. But nor is it a destination. It's not the, the, the terminal point, but it is a fresh departure moment. And uh, we're here to, today and uh, we recognize that as, uh, as Ian and Jill, as it were, uh, board this, the train, if you like, uh, of Garstang Free Methodist Church and continue with you into all that God has for you in 2021. This is a significant moment, a fresh departure, a, a new launch into the, the plans and purposes that our loving Father has for you through 2021 and, of course, beyond into all that lies ahead. And, and fresh departure moments, it's good just to be reminded of the, of the significant landmarks that help frame our journey. And, and, and we're passionate about this, uh, that every free Methodist church is, is committed to, to the great commandments of loving God and loving people. And to always align ourselves with that great commission to go into all the world and to make disciples. And, and with this clarity of focus in place, to love love God, love people, make disciples. Uh, we are so passionate as well that pastoral leadership in the church, in the free Methodist church, uh, focuses on developing healthy, biblical communities of holy people who as the spirit leads and guides and directs, uh, reach new people, mentor leaders, start new groups, plant new churches, all in step with what he is saying and doing amongst you. Rooted in a deep love for Christ and overflowing his compassion for people, Free Methodist pastors help encourage congregations to be fervent in prayer, enthusiastic in worship, holy in lifestyle, insistent for justice, caring for the poor, reaching out locally and globally in order to invite and, uh, and to call people into a, a life with God through faith in Jesus Christ. So in the light of this call, in the clarity of the life and mission of the church. We're here today to recognize this fresh departure moment for Ian and for Jill, and of course, for you at Garstang Free Methodist Church. We're here to do so in this induction service. And in a few moments, I'm gonna be asking Ian and Jill some questions. And then following that, I'm gonna be inviting you to respond to some questions and also make some commitments in this journey of faith that God has for you. But before we do that, let me pray for you. Father God, I want to thank you uh, for your presence in these special moments. And I pray even now that you would grant to Ian and Jill the blessing of your grace and may they know the presence and the enabling of your Holy Spirit uh, as they make these commitments before you and in the context of, of the church family to which you have called them. Thank you for them. Be with us 
and as a church family, give to us also that grace and that life in the spirit to be your people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ian and Jill, it's so great to be with you this morning and to, to have the privilege of, uh, of asking you these questions. And uh, uh, I'm going to ask those now and I'm going to invite you to, uh, to respond. And first of all, Ian, for you. And then in a few moments, Jill, uh, a question for you as well. But Ian, you've recently been appointed uh, as lead pastor of Garstang Free Methodist Church. And so will you now renew your commitment to Christ? and his ministry through the church? I will. Will you be diligent in study, faithful in your personal walk with Christ, and careful in church administration? Will you be constant in prayer and faithful to the word? Will you earnestly teach the things of God? Will you endeavor to provide worship services of warmth, dignity, and grace, bringing honour to our God. I will, with God as the source of my strength. Will you be a man of God and a friend of all, appreciative and approachable, radiant and responsive, gentle and strong, encouraging and loving? Will you be glad with those who need the gift of joy, serious toward those who need a listening ear, reverent among those who seek prayer, expecting the best of God's people, unswervingly committed to the faith you represent. These things I will try to do in his service. Amen. Will you study to show yourself approved of God, seeking to avoid an indulgent temper and the luxury of self-pity? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to so fill your life as to bring evidence of the fruit of the Spirit? I will, God being my helper. And will you teach the word of God by precept and example? Will you by your own Christian experience and through biblical preaching lead your people to know the Holy Spirit's sanctifying and empowering work in their lives will you preach the truth your people need rather than what they delight to hear speaking his wisdom i do so promise wonderful jill do you join in this pledge by declaring before god and this congregation your willingness to cooperate with ian your husband and in every way possible to assist in building the kingdom of God in this ministry. The Lord being my helper, I do. That's great. Well, upon these solemn promises, uh, they're weighty, aren't they? Uh, I now welcome you, Pastor Ian Heath, as lead pastor of the Garstang Free Methodist Church family in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well, it would be a great joy to be able to give you a, a, a warm <laughs> hug and uh, to give you a handshake in these yeah. moments. But we do welcome you. And we will be praying for you both in your life and ministry. Thank you. For, for you as a church congregation, uh, the, these commitments, these questions on this occasion, in this fresh departure moment really uh, aren't just for Ian and Jill, though those uh uh, responses they've given are weighty for sure for them but I have some questions that I would like to ask you and uh, I invite you to respond to these questions with me as I lead you in that way having received this man of God as your lead pastor do you pledge to support him with prayer understanding and cooperation we do do you pledge to attentively receive his ministry of the word, to share the responsibility of teaching and learning, and so uh, and to assume your part in the church's ministries? We do. Do you pledge to receive him into your hearts 
and homes to counsel with him concerning the welfare of the church and the winning of souls to encourage him in his stand for the right to forgive him when he makes mistakes and to follow his leadership in the areas assigned as he follows Christ. We do. I want to invite you to make some commitments as a congregation at this moment of fresh departure too. So as I invite you to make some response, I'm going to lead you. Uh, and so say with me these responses also to these commitments. To the declaration of the good news of salvation, we consecrate our gifts. To the redemptive witness of the church in this community, we consecrate our time. To the healing of broken bodies, minds and relationships, we consecrate our service. To the leading of children and youth to Jesus, we consecrate our talents. To caring for the helpless and relief of suffering, we consecrate our strength. And to the fulfilling of the Great Commission, we consecrate our wealth, our efforts, and our lives. Well, so may the Lord fill you and overflow through you his life-giving and life-transforming spirit. Amen. 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 Let me pray for Ian and Jill. Father, we thank you for Ian and Jill today. And I pray in these moments, uh, first of all, for Ian. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you would give him uh, a heart that is open to the leading of your spirit uh, each and every day. I pray that he would know your presence in his life. I pray that you would give him great courage as he seeks to be faithful to your word. Uh, I pray that time in your presence would enrich his heart and faith and life. And I pray, Lord, that there would be an overflowing of uh, this life in the spirit that brings grace and truth and the love of God for the joy of, of, the, of the church family, but also for the joy of others into the community and beyond that through his life and ministry, it would please you to bring the very love of Jesus to I pray, Lord, that you would grant to him, Lord, a fruitful, growing, deepening ministry. I pray that people would experience your life changing presence and that they would grow in the knowledge and experience of your love. And Lord, we pray for that growth of your kingdom. May your kingdom come. May your will be done in them uh, and through them. This church family in Jesus name. And I pray for Ian and Jill as a couple. Uh, I pray that uh, in the challenges and the joys of ministry, that home would be a, a place of, uh, of love and grace, a, a place of refreshment and renewal. I pray that you would keep them, Lord, in, in, in the abundance of your love for them. Uh, and I pray that uh, that life together in, in the joys and the challenges of ministry would for them be a, a joy uh, and a blessing. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you. Lord, we praise you and thank you for Ian and Jill. We pray for Ian. We pray for wisdom and knowledge and compassion, for patience and everything needed to care as a shepherd for his flock, for so many different people and personalities, for different needs to be met, that, Lord, you will give Ian a fresh anointing, that your Holy Spirit will flow through him, that he knows that you are leading him. As he prays and reads your word, that your word will feed him, that your spirit will lead him, and that your love will overthrow through him to others, for God to strengthen him in every way, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Lead him in your way, Lord. And that we, as his flock, will support and care for him and not expect too much from him. For Jill, that you give her everything she needs to support Ian. That she knows how much you love her 
and how important she is to you. That as she gives up her job and leaves friends and family and whatever behind and moves to Garstang, that you fill up those places with a new challenge and a new hope and a new future. For their daughters, Lord, that you keep them safe and protect them from the enemy. Use their wonderful talents and gifts for your glory. We praise and worship you, our Lord and Saviour, for bringing Ian and Jill into our church family. And Acts 2, 20, 27 to 28 says, For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come before you today to thank you for our new lead pastor, Ian Heath, and his wife, Jill. As a church, we thank you for your guiding hand over the last 12 months, a difficult, uncertain and worrying 12 months. But as Paul writes in Romans 8, 28, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And so it is that almost a year on from the beginning of the pandemic, we sit here with spring almost upon us, and the potential for new life and growth at Garstein. We have a newly renovated building fit for purpose and a new lead pastor in Ian, ready to lead us into a new chapter of whatever you have in store for us. So Lord, we thank you for Ian and Jill's passion for you and their passion for your work. Something which was clear from the first moment we met them and has become even more apparent in their first few weeks here in Garstein. We thank you for their testimony and experience of you, Father, and also for their commitment and enthusiasm to making this move happen in difficult circumstances and when obstacles were put in their way. We ask now, Lord, that you fill them with your spirit and inspire them as they strive to lead us through the challenges of trying to return to normal life, slowly but surely, while settling themselves into a new church and into a new area. Lord, help us to help them settle to encourage them without putting pressure on them, to help them not to hinder them. So Lord, thank you for leading Ian and Jill to us and for making it so clear to us as a church that Ian was who you had chosen to lead us into our next half century. We ask that you bless them and in turn you bless us through their ministry. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Hey 
the trumpet sounds and the dead will then be raised by his power never to perish again once only now clothed with immortality Death has now been Swallowed up in victory We will meet him Well, again, it's just so great to uh, connect with you and uh, it's a thrill to have been involved in Ian's induction. And as we look at God's word together this morning now, let me read some verses from uh, Isaiah 10 
and then some verses into Isaiah chapter 11. They may seem strange at first, but bear with me as we take a journey together this morning. Isaiah 10, 33. See, the Lord, the Lord Almighty will lop off the boughs with great power. The lofty trees will be felled. The tall ones will be brought low. He'll cut down the forest thickets with an axe. Lebanon will fall before the mighty one. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. And then on to verse 10. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his place of rest will be glorious. We're so thankful for God's Word. It's for all people of all nations, of all generations, and I trust that God, through this uh, passage, through his reading, will speak to us on the occasion of, uh, of Ian's induction and for you uh, at Garstang. So much of 2021 continues to be ahead of us. We're, of course, still early in the year. We're wondering just what's going to unfold uh, in the coming weeks as we begin perhaps to hope and anticipate uh, some of the easings of the lockdown restrictions that we've all been in and uh, we are certainly at a fresh departure point for you at Garstang Free Methodist Church and we've already been talking about that and we've already been looking to keep our heart uh, and our mission clear. But as we take a look at our world uh, in our everyday lives, notwithstanding the restrictions, it is perhaps obvious to see and say there are all kinds of reasons and purposes that people by and large pursue with their lives. The, the motive for living all kinds of things around us. When I was back in high school, and uh, studying Robert Frost poems. I, I remember the lines of one poem particularly grabbing my attention. Those lines actually had a lasting influence in my life. The poem was called The Road Less Traveled. Uh, and the closing lines in the poem were the lines that grabbed me. They were this, two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled, and that has made all the difference. You see, into the mind of this young guy all those years ago uh, was the thought that it would be easy for me to choose a popular path, uh, a, a course for life that, 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 like everybody else around me, may have been taking. But, but I had to choose if I was going to simply choose the popular one because it was popular, or would I have the courage to choose that road less traveled by, that different path, that different outlook, not just for the sake of it being different, but because the path in its values, its call, its purpose, its message for life, its changing hopes, its goals, uh, this heartbeat, this path of trouble, would it express this love for God, this love for peoples, this readiness to seek to advance his kingdom, would I be willing to take this path less traveled by? And from those years of uh, early years of coming to faith in Jesus, I can honestly say I'm so thankful for the road less traveled, uh, but knowing it has, uh, and it does still make all the difference in the world. Now, all of that to say that Isaiah, in a poetic way, 
brings to us also a picture, not of two paths that are diverging in a wood, but a picture of, uh, of hope that I believe that God through His Word wants to encourage our hearts and given the season we are in to give us and provide us a great focus for life's uh, and faith's journey for you at Garstang for 2021. Let me try and describe the scene uh, that Isaiah describes to us in this kind of poetic language that we have here. The picture at the end of chapter, of chapter 10 is this picture of this great forest and all the trees have been cut down and only the stumps of the trees are remaining. And then after chapter 10, at the start of chapter 11, Isaiah brings us to this one other stump. This tree that also has been cut down, but our eyes, he brings our eyes to this one stump that's been cut down, but looking at this stump, he draws our attention to this. Out of this stump, a fresh shoot has grown, which goes on to become a branch that bears great fruit, and ultimately we're going to see how this branch, how this results in a great hope for the peoples of the world. And we're going to come to that in a minute. But what is going on here in this poetic picture that Isaiah gives to us? What relevance does this event of 2,700 years ago have for us today? In, in what ways, uh, as we're looking at this on this occasion of Ian's induction, in what ways is this to fuel you at Garstang Free Methodist Church or indeed for each one of you who's listening in into the context of your life, your home, your workplace, uh, the place where you go into the community each week. As those who believe that God is real and that God loves us uh, and that he speaks to us from the Bible, what we have in these few verses is a picture not of two roads, but of two kings. And what we hear as we just look at this for a moment is we hear this wonderful invitation from our Father in heaven that I believe will grab your hearts and set some direction uh, in, not in a specific sense, in the way that Ian and the lead team may take you, but in this heartbeat principle of how we may live well in 2021. So he brings us to two kings. The first king is the king of Assyria. Back in Isaiah's day, he was the king of a great empire that history confirms swept through nations. Isaiah describes this king and what he says about himself in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 13. He boasts about his greatness. Here's what he says. By the strength of my hand, I've done this. And by my wisdom, because I have understanding, I removed the boundaries of nations. I plundered their treasures. Like a mighty one, I subdued their kings. It is this king that Isaiah describes as being like that great forest at the end of chapter 10 that is completely cut down. We're reminded that even on a global scale, kingdoms and empires rise and fall. Even those that seem impossible, they're flourishing and they're great and powerful. They appear invincible for a while, but as we trace the story of history, even the most powerful empires and the most uh, significant rulers, as history would describe them, they rise and they fall. Kings and queens, empires and superpowers come and go. Well, the simple thing is, as I'm pretty sure that sat in Garstang Free Methodist Church, there isn't a world ruler sat there and maybe not even a, a, a business empire uh, leader in any way. But we too see and are encouraged to see in this picture that our lives too can rise and fall. Lives that are here today, the Bible says, and are gone tomorrow. He was the pastor and Christian writer John Ortberg in his book uh, that was called simply this, It All Goes Back in the Box. He reminds us, he tells us of this childhood experience that he had of playing Monopoly with his gran. 
Uh, she was ruthless. She won every game. And John recalls the first time as a child growing up being beaten by his gran. He remembers the first time that he won the game. He had all the houses, all the hotels, all the money. He had won. And his gran taught him a lesson. He said that he never, ever forgot. A lesson that shaped his life. She said, remember, John, when the game is all over, it all goes back in the box. You take none of it with you. And so we are reminded in this picture of this forest flourishing and powerful, but all cut down, stumps in the land. We are reminded in this way that everything that we have and own, the breath even that we breathe, is a gift from God. And this gift of life with the gift of resources and the gifts and the talents that he's given you and me. Th these were never intended for you and I solely to live for the story of our lives, to live only for our own ends or our own needs or our own pursuits. They were given so that we could be living a life that wasn't just rich for ourselves, but a life rich towards God and the things of God. They were given so we could be part of God's great big story of God's loving purposes, of, of rescuing and restoring a world that had gone wrong, uh, and in His name, and in His power, and in His love, to see uh, people's lives and communities restored, even as the kingdom of God comes, as we serve and go and engage in this way. So the first king was the king of Assyria. The second king Isaiah draws our hearts and minds to is the king who God promised through Isaiah for sure and others, this king who would come. Isaiah sees the nation of Israel, his own nation, as that other stump. They were going to be overcome by Assyria later, uh, as well by the Babylonian Empire. These events, we know, took place in history. They're going to be taken far away from their own land into exile in a foreign land. Uh, the picture is of this tree cut off, uh, a stump in the land, that which seemed to be without hope. But Isaiah draws our eyes to this shoot, this shoot coming out from the stump of Jesse, uh, that's going to grow and bear fruit. And of course, this was a, a wonderful picture of the coming of Jesus, that this king that God had promised, that Isaiah was writing about, this descendant of Jesse, he will come. And he's the king who's going to bring hope to the peoples of the world. And, and Isaiah, in these opening verses of Isaiah 11, begins to describe to us this king and, uh, and his life and reign. It's going to be one of truth and goodness and justice and faithfulness. I mean, he, he gives this picture of this incomparable king who had come into the world but he's also the king unlike any other king, unlike any other ruler, any other superpower ruler of history. His kingdom, Isaiah says, won't rise and fall, but will grow and advance and extend to the nations of the world. And one day this king, as we celebrate and remember at Christmas, this King Jesus, he came into the world and ever since uh, his coming and, and since his death and his resurrection, his kingdom has been growing and peoples all around the world have been coming to faith in him. And one day our great hope is this, that this same king will come again. And, and, and the reality of his kingdom our hearts will be strengthened with this wonderful reality. Nations will be gathered to him and they'll see him face to face. The brokenness that is seen in our world today will be removed. There'll be no more harm, no destruction anymore. Every sorrow will be passed and the most profound and real joy will fill everything. And we find that hard to take in even as we live and anticipate it through our assurance and our faith in Jesus, but we know we're not there yet. And yet you and I, we are part of a family and a kingdom who we can read about every single day, who is advancing and growing uh, around the world, seeking to bring healing and hope and the grace of Jesus to communities, towns and cities. And we pray and we give, 
and we serve to see his kingdom come. So it's with these two kings that Isaiah has has brought our attention to in these verses. Uh, And and we come to this moment, what is to unfold? What are we to make of this? Even as we have this fresh departure point with Ian uh, coming on board with you all there at Garstang and 2021 still ahead. What invitation does our Father in heaven give to us this morning? Well, There are lots of things that can certainly fill our time. There are lots of paths that we could choose to take, many roads that we could travel, but the invitation our Father sets before us maybe is a road less traveled by. But I believe it's one that will make all the difference. The invitation of our Father, I believe, is this, two things. I believe he's saying to us, will you take time to be encouraged and renewed and strengthened by hope by hope that whole image of a tree being cut off like a stump for all those this morning and maybe this is you for all who feel hopeless for all who feel so much in this season has been cut back for those who feel like a the stump of a tree and and it just feels hard we see hope it it isn't just a change of circumstances we see uh, that hope is ultimately a person. This shoot will come out of the stump of, uh, this shoot of Jesse will come out of that stump. And uh, for those who wonder, has hope gone? Everything's cut off. For those who wonder if God can forgive their past, Isaiah brings us to this point of seeing that ultimately this promised king, he's our hope. Jesus gave himself for us on the cross. Psalm 130 verse 7 says this, put your hope in the Lord for with the Lord is unfailing love and with him uh, is, he is fullness, is full redemption. For those who wonder if God can forgive, Jesus is your hope. With him is unfailing love. The one who loved you and gave himself on the cross, in him is full redemption. It's a, it's a, maybe if you're unsure of what that means, this is every, everything about your sin he's carried, he's paid for when he died on the cross for you so that you, no matter what has gone on, you and I can know his full forgiveness and grace. For those who wonder if God has forgotten them, In a season like this, at home, for those who wonder if God has forgotten them, in the context of their lives, we are reminded through Christmas time, he really is, he is Emmanuel, he's God with us. He is the hope that came into the darkness of the world. We may not always understand what or why things happen to us, but our hope is in him to lead us through such things. Psalm 25 verse 5 says this, guide me in your truth, O God, and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Take time to be encouraged in hope. He is the God who forgives. He's the God who's with us. He is the God who's present in everything that we face. Now, the invitation is really to see that Jesus is God's gift of hope and to receive him and to trust in him and to know that he loves you and gave himself for you is to fill you with the assurance of the love and the presence of God in in a life-transforming way. But let me just say one other thing before I share the other invitation I believe our Father would give us. I want to share something that I trust will encourage you in your sense of hope as it did mine. Actually, last December, early uh, in the month, I was invited into a prayer meeting uh, it, was, it was a Zoom prayer meeting, and there were about 100 people from nations all over the world. 25, I had on my, on my computer screen, 25 faces, and you could go on to the next one. So 25, and scroll on again, and so there were 100 people. Uh, and the people who were there were from Asia, and Africa, and South America, and North America, and Canada, right across Europe as well, uh, even some uh, from countries where we couldn't see their faces blanked out from, from other parts of the world. And uh, here we were, 
praying. And, I, and I'd been reading these verses from Isaiah in the days before this meeting, and I realized something, and it absolutely thrilled me. It caused my heart to soar with hope. I was with my own eyes seeing this verse in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10, being fulfilled uh, before my eyes. Isaiah 11 verse 10 says this, in that day the roots of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples, the nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. And right there in that moment, my hope soared, my hope in Jesus, the Savior who loved me, the God who had come to be with me. I saw a fulfillment of this verse as nations gathered to him and rallied to him. I believe here at the start of 2021, with all that's going on, the Father, through the story of these kings, gives us a wonderful invitation to be encouraged in hope. He is God, our Savior, with us, and at work in the world, and the nations are rallying to him. And then lastly and briefly, as I finish this, the second invitation I believe our Father would give to us this morning through his word is not only to take time to be encouraged in hope, but secondly, to take time this year in the whole of life, in your family life, your work life, your uh, part of the church family life, take time to engage in his mission. Our hope flows into this. Isaiah 31, be strong, take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. To Joshua, as he was going to advance into the land, uh, be strong, be very courageous. Uh, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged because the Lord your God is going to be with you wherever you go. Take time to engage in his mission. And I believe in these few verses we are encouraged not to be consumed with simply living our own lives and our own stories and pursuing our own needs as if life was found in, in staff or popularity or name. But he invites us to be shaped, not to be shaped and influenced by the voices of our culture and the appearance of things around us and what others think of us and how they see us, but to the invitation is to really be righteous to really be faithful to all that God has given us in the time and the resources and the energies he's given so that, that, so that we are faithful, that, that we can be relied upon, that we can be trusted to speak and act truthfully and serve humbly where help is needed and, and, and hope is needed in the lives of others. You see, living out this message is quite simply living, acting, serving in this humble life that seeks to bring the love and truth of God's life-transforming kingdom into our streets and into our community. And to realize all of this is possible because of Jesus, because of his coming and all that he's done for us. Ian, I simply want to say on the occasion of your induction, may I encourage you in your ministry to go on strengthening the church with this hope that we've got. Ian, I want to encourage you as you unpack God's word into the hearts and minds of all at Garstang Free Methodist Church. Will you keep on presenting Jesus through your preaching, your teaching, uh, whether it's on Sunday or in small groups or wherever it may be, through your ministry of the word, would you keep making Jesus magnificent and amazing to hearts and minds for all at Garstang? He really is our hope. He is the center of the gospel of hope. And I encourage you, we keep on encouraging God's people with the hope that is found in Jesus. But may you also, by example and through the scripture, continue to encourage and equip the church to engage, to respond to the heart of the Father, to engage in this life-transforming mission of God as whole life followers of Jesus for the joy of all people, for the transforming of lives of people in Garstang and across the region and through your partnerships and missions, for the joy of people in different parts of the world. Which road will you take personally? Which road will you take together as a church family? As you take time 
in the presence of the promised incomparable and forever King Jesus. As you take time to be encouraged in hope that He's Savior, He's King, He's at work in the world, and to encounter the God of hope, as you take time to engage in His mission, as His love and grace overflow through you, as you take time on this path of engaging with hope and engaging in mission, it may be the road less traveled by. But I want to say to you this morning, the invitation and the promise of the Father is this. It will be the road that makes all the difference. Let me pray for you. So Father God, just thank you this morning for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the light in the darkness. And I pray, Lord, for Ian and for Jill, and I pray for all at Garstein Free Methodist Church. May they this year know this wonderful hope that is knowing you, Jesus. And as you empower them and equip them and, and work through them, may they bring your grace, your love, your transforming presence to the people right across Garstang and the region and to different parts of the world as you work in them and through them for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Bless you.
service but do join us if you're able for a brew via zoom at 11:45 a.m also this evening it's our prayer by zoom at 7 p.m and then next week it will be a communion by zoom again at 7 p.m also it's not too late to join in or to catch up with our journey through lent we're encouraging the church to read through all four gospels during Lent and we'll be providing devotions each day. You can join in with our Facebook group or simply receive the devotions via email. If you already receive the DVDs then the devotions will be put in with that as well. We hope that that's an encouragement to you as we journey towards Easter together. Thank you for joining us for this service. God bless you.